In this video, learn more about the 2020 NACA convention and why if you only go to one adjuster conference, it needs to be NACA. And learn all about absorbing the deductible, starting now. This is Adjuster TV. Hey, it's Matt here with Adjuster TV and for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. Click on the bell notification so that you'll never miss a video. Okay, let's talk conferences. Why would you even want to go to an industry conference or convention? What are the benefits to you if you attend? What are the benefits to our industry if you attend? Well, here's the skinny on conferences. You need to attend as many conferences as you can for the following reasons. Number one, it's outstanding networking. You're gonna meet the managers and HR people who will be the ones who pick up the phone to call you to go on CAD deployments. Also, you'll make friends with other new and experienced adjusters. But how does this help you? Well, let me just share with you a text that I've probably gotten a hundred times in my adjusting career. I was not on the first call list on my first few storms and having friends who would get called before me and then call to tell me about it got me on several great storms. Number two, it's a great way to get easy CE and focused training. One of the big draws for many conferences is that the presentations and training they offer almost always gets you continuing education credits. All you have to do is show up. And attending the Xactuary User Conference, or the Elevate Conference, gives you the opportunity to get Xactimate certifications from the people who actually developed the software. And number three, it's a great way to support our industry. Almost every possible trade and occupation out there has trade associations that you can join to get special member benefits. Not only that, but your entry fee can go to help furthering the interests of independent adjusters as a group, not just for us as individuals. Many, many IA firms and other groups have conferences just for adjusters. And there are a ton of conferences for the insurance industry as a whole that field adjusters like you and me could definitely benefit from. But if you ask me which conference I'd attend, if I could only go to one, it would be NACA without a doubt. Now why? Because NACA is one of the few conferences that I know of where you, the independent adjuster, can interview with 60 plus IA firms over three days. On the fourth day, there's a huge expo with gear and tech companies, all the IA firms, and so much more. It's a big deal, especially if you're looking for work and you want to support independent adjusters as a group, as a whole. And speaking of NACA, their 44th annual career fair and expo is January 12th through the 16th at the Tropicana in Las Vegas, which is next week. Adjuster TV will be there covering the conference so that if you can't make it, you can see what you're missing. So there won't be a regularly scheduled video next week. However, there will be tons of videos and daily live streams here on YouTube from the conference. And Adjuster TV is in booth 403. So I'll see you there, right? Okay, let's talk about absorbing the deductible. The technical term for this is applying the deductible to the amount in excess of the policy limit. So a few definitions are kind of in order here. So the policy limit is the limit for a particular coverage as found on an insured's deck page. For a homeowner's policy, a policyholder might have a dwelling limit for the house of $250,000. They might also have some kind of uh, special extra coverage like a backup of sewer and drain endorsement. Endorsements add coverage and usually have their own policy limit and often their own deductibles. In addition, the standard HO policy will also have something called special limits, which I covered in another video. And then deductibles. So hopefully not to confuse this more than it needs to be, but insurance policies in North America are basically a form of Co-insurance, a term you've likely heard before if you've studied anything at all about insurance or have gotten any adjuster licenses. And what this means is, is that a homeowner's policy, for example, promises to pay for covered losses up to the policy limit for that particular coverage. But the policyholder for the insured is also required to pay a little bit as well. Co-insurance, co so they're both paying a little bit on the claim. Well, the insurance company's paying almost all of it and the, the policyholder's paying a little bit, but they're they're both paying something, right? So and when you're settling up a claim with a homeowner, if they ask you why they have to pay a deductible, you just say, because that's your part of the claim. I've touched on this on a few other videos, but I really wanted to go into more depth with it here. And that is, of course, applying the deductible to the amount in excess of the policy limit, or as we kind of say, sort of slang, absorbing the deductible. So most of the time, this isn't gonna come up in typical cap property claims. However, Anytime you have situations affected by special limits, 
total losses, or extra coverages from endorsements, you'll have opportunities to absorb the deductible. Let's do a few examples here. So say we've got a detached two-car garage that's been canoed by a big old oak tree. The garage is insured by default to 10% of whatever the dwelling coverage is. So we'll say that the dwelling is insured to $150,000, which means that the garage is insured to $15,000 with replacement costs. And then let's say that the insured installed a wood shake roof on the garage and some steel siding so that it matches, that it was all matchy matchy with the house. Those two things alone, if you kind of add them up, are gonna be close to that $15,000 limit because those are expensive, uh, exterior finishes, right? So then when you include framing, electrical, doors, windows, drywall, insulation, maybe some site work, and then all the debris removal for the, the structure, we're probably gonna go over our $15,000 limit by a little bit. So leaving replacement costs and ACV calculations off for a minute, if the grand total to replace the detached garage with like kind and quality is $27,000, that's gonna be $12,000 more than the limit of $15,000, right? Does that make sense? So quick question for you, is it gonna be fair to say to an insured, hey, you've got a $15,000 coverage limit for your garage, but uh, at your $1,000 deductible, here's your check for 14,000 bucks. So this is a situation where you want to absorb the deductible. When you're doing this calculation or when your estimating software does it for you, here's what happens. You write your estimate for whatever it takes to remove the ruined garage and replace it with like kind and quality materials, right? So, and we said that was $27,000. Then we apply the deductible to that $27,000, right? Then we apply the limit to that amount, right? So it's not the other way around. We don't take the deductible after we've applied the limit. So this is what it means when we say absorb the deductible. Makes sense? Now, say they were going to apply depreciation to this claim, right? So let's say that the depreciation is $10,000. So our new calculation looks kind of like this. We have our grand total of $27,000, less depreciation of $10,000, which makes our new ACV total $17,000. Then we apply the $1,000 deductible, which brings us down to $16,000. And then we apply the policy limit. 15,000 bucks, right? P pretty simple. And it should be noted that even if the depreciation is recoverable in this example, it is not available to the insured because they've already exceeded the policy limit. It is not possible for them to get more than the policy limit, which we just paid 15 grand. And you're gonna have insureds ask you, well, hey, how do I get the rest of that money? And you have to say, well, you can't because this is the limit. And when you write your estimate, you have to make sure that when you have an ACV that's more than the policy limit, any depreciation that's above that has to be marked off as non-recoverable because it's non-recoverable. Doesn't mean it's non-recoverable under the policy, but it's, it's still non-recoverable for the insured because they've already exceeded the limit. Okay, well, you're probably wondering, well, what if the ACV amount is less than the policy limit? And that's a great question. So our grand total is $27,000, right? But let's say our depreciation is 12,500 which makes our ACV total 14,500. And then we apply the deductible to the ACV amount, which makes our first payment 13,500, right? The limit doesn't apply because our ACV payment does not exceed it. So we can't absorb the deductible here quite yet. Now, if the insured gets the work done and requests the recoverable depreciation, then the DA will recalculate the claim based on the final invoice from the contractor. So long story short, with this claim, no matter where the deductible is taken, they can only end up with $15,000, right? Does that make sense? And keep in mind that the deductible is only taken once, even though when you show these calculations, especially if you do reinspections or supplements, it looks like the deductible is getting taken every single time. It's only in there to show the math, right? Now, where this can get really sticky is when you've got a claim where several policy limits are in play. For example, we've got our detached garage, you know, blown down by wind for $15,000. That's the limit, right? So, and we also have a pop-up camper trailer damaged by wind. It has a special limit of $1,500. And then maybe we've got a tree that blew down and caused damage to the house, or we've got a debris, re debris removal limit for the tree debris of, of $500, right? And this is such a typical claim. And I know I said that opportunities to absorb the deductible aren't that common in the beginning of this video. I don't think that's really that true. So here you've got three chances to absorb the deductible, right? If the detached garage is totaled and the ACV is over $15,000, 
if the repair to the trailer goes over $1,500, or if the haul off of the tree debris exceeds the $500 policy limit. Like it's a gigantic tree and there's no way in the world that one $500 dumpster is gonna take care of all that tree debris that it took to get off the house, right? The good news is this, if you're using estimating software to write your estimates, and since this isn't 1987, you absolutely are, the software will do these calculations for you automatically provided that you properly input the coverage amounts in the software when you did your claim setup. In Xactimate, for example, here's how you set up your coverages. Apply deductible to all coverages so that it can spread the deductible over multiple coverages instead of just putting it on the dwelling where it won't be absorbed because the dwelling limit is so big. I'm telling you, you absolutely should look for these opportunities to help out the insured wherever you can. Question of the day. Does applying the deductible to the amount exceeding the policy limit make sense to you? If not, let us know in the comments and we can get your questions answered for you. You can also pop into the Adjuster TV private Facebook group and post up your questions about this or any other topic there. And for much more information about crushing it as an independent adjuster, head on over to adjustertv.com. And if you got value from this video, you can help me create more videos just like this by subscribing to Adjuster TV on YouTube. Wondering what to watch next? There are tons more videos right here on the Adjuster TV YouTube channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm. And we'll see you at NACA 2020 next week. And if this is the year 2027, then we won't see you there next week.